Hello and welcome to About Town. My name is Mark Ingham. I work for the City of Richland. My guest today is former Hanford Falcon great, current Minnesota <laughs> Twins outfielder, Jason Repko. Thanks for spending some time with us today. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah. You know, we've decided to bring you back to your old stomping grounds. Um, you know, we're here at Hanford High School's newly and beautifully renovated uh, trophy room. Um, these are the hallways you walked as a, as, a, as a senior, as a student. You know, what are just the first memories and emotions that are kind of coming back to you right now? Well, like I told you just a second ago, walking in here, it, it looks amazing. Uh, but obviously not having to walk outside every two steps you take, you know, it seemed like there's a lot more space uh, between everything. Obviously, when you walk up, uh, you see the gray and the purple. It looks awesome. Um, mm -hmm. I think before then it was like a, a pale yellow, uh, <laughs> you know, so I, it looks like it's made great changes. Uh, and it's exciting every time I pull up to the school. Uh, peek over at the baseball field, so many memories out there, and uh, mm -hmm. it's just nice to get a chance to come back. Yeah, and you mentioned the baseball diamond, and I mean, it's no secret to anyone that, you know, you really excelled for the Hanford Falcon baseball team. Uh, as a senior, you hit a, a blistering 581, slammed 18 home runs, stole 14 bases. Just maybe what, what memories stick out most about that senior, your senior year? I, being nervous, you know, mm -hmm. I remember uh, my junior year, I went out there and I had a great season, and Right after that junior year, just all the colleges come in and uh, professional scouts talking to me, and that's when the pressure kind of kicked in. You know, I knew I, I had to do as good as I did my year before or better. Um, I just, yeah, I just remember being real nervous, but but excited at the same time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a great group of kids on the team, and uh, Coach Glenn Mikey was awesome. Um, so, you know, we went out there and we had a lot of fun, and and uh, we had other other kids in the league uh, with Moses Lake that that drew a lot of scouts as well. So it, it made the season uh, real memorable and mm -hmm. uh, I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, and all the hard work and uh, you put in, earned you a selection as a high school All-American at, at your senior year, amazing. How did the teachers and coaches here at Hanford just help nurture your, you know, your dreams to, to, to play in the professional? Uh, everyone was great about it, you know. Uh, I, Ever since I came here, um, I felt nothing but positive, positive vibes. You know, I think um, everyone pushed me in the right direction. They helped me with my school. Um, school was always hard for me because I had to put so much work into doing well. And uh, every teacher here really, really helped me, you know, be what I needed to be to focus on baseball and, uh, you know, end up making it to where I am. Yeah, it's great. Um, you know, your success and skill set on the baseball field brought you a lot of attention nationally from colleges and, and professional uh, team scouts. Um, in fact, you were selected by USA Today as one of the top high school prospects in the nation heading into your, your senior year at Hanford High School. You know, we may have students here locally going through similar situation, maybe the, the same situation you're, you went through. You know, what advice can you give them about what they are about to go through and how do you, you, know, you can look past those distractions and focus on, on your sport? It, you're right, it, it is tough to, to focus. Uh, it's, it's a lot of pressure. Um, I would say uh, the biggest thing, you, you just gotta believe in yourself. Um, you know, when you talk to coaches or you talk to other people that are trying to help you, um, take in what they're telling you, uh, filter out what you know is not right. You know yourself best. Um, you know, more than anything, believe in yourself. And uh, mm -hmm. if you believe you can reach it, uh, push yourself and you can. Great. And you know those, those distractions we just talked about kind of pale in distractions to maybe the, just the, the distractions every teenager feels as far as peer pressure, just, just things like that. You know, you knew at a young age what you wanted to be, what you wanted to be when you grew up. You know, just how are, how are you able to stay on that path and maybe, and, and who helped you stay focused? Yeah, I think the biggest thing at the beginning was just how bad I wanted to be a Major League Baseball player. I think uh, I wanted to play in the professional so bad that my focus was so keyed in there that that helped me you know, stay on the straighter path than, than most people would. But besides that, I think uh, my parents, you know, my mom and dad did a great job at you know, um, talking with me, um, let me know what's out there, what to stay away from, and uh, just that if I worked hard in school and, and, and I you know, kept out of trouble that things would work out and, um, you know, I followed the way that they directed me and I had a lot of good teachers here and, and friends at the same time that, that definitely helped me uh, stay on the right path to get here. Yeah, great. And, you know, the culmination of all, all your hard work and dedication here in high school paid off June 2nd, 1999, probably one of the most exciting days of your life. <laughs> Los Angeles Dodgers draft you the first pick of the Major League Baseball draft. Um, just what do you remember about that day, and can you even put into words how exciting it was for you and your family? Yeah, it was it was amazing. Um, you know, first thing I got school off. That was pretty cool. <laughs> but um, no, you know, I remember uh, sitting at home, I, and actually, I think there's about another four or five of my good friends that took school off that day, and all came over, and uh, we sat there through the morning, had a good breakfast, and just 
just kind of waited for the phone to ring. You know, uh, we knew that you know at a certain time the draft started, and we knew the longer it it took to ring, the farther in the draft I would. And uh, luckily, it rang pretty quick, and it was first round. And um, you know, I'm talking with the GMs and Tommy Lasorda and some of these head haunches that you know I would never guess I was talking to just a couple minutes earlier. And uh, it was just it was amazing. The the feeling was great. Yeah, and we. You know, I know you, you've always wanted to be a professional, a big league baseball player, but at the same time, you, you turned down full ride scholarship to, I believe it was San Jose State? San Diego State. San Diego yep. State. And you um, actually had to miss your high school graduation, but I mean, all worth it. Definitely worth it. You mm -hmm. know, I always wonder what it would have been like. You know, I see pictures of friends and stuff. Uh, but uh, overall, obviously, definitely worth it. Mm -hmm. Great. And you know, you wasted no time proving you belonged in the big leagues. In your first season with the Great Fall Dodgers, you hit 304 eight home runs, 12 steals, and were selected to the, the Pioneer All-Star League team. Um, but in 2000, kind of a, a painful trend began. Just maybe talk a little bit about the, the injuries you know, you've sustained and maybe how they've, how they've affected your career. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I had the injury bug very early in my career. My first spring training there in, in 2000, excited to get down there, excited to show them uh, what I can do, hopefully excel and maybe jump some levels, get to high A, double A quicker. Um, and I had a great spring going that year. And uh, right there at the end, the last week of the, the spring, I ended up tearing a hamstring. Uh, so that put me out, you know, a couple months. And I rushed to get back from that. Before you know it, I fractured a vertebrae. So, you know, it just kind of seemed like a little, you know, tumbling block where things just one thing led to another. And uh, that was kind of a start of a, a little bad trend of injuries there. And uh, mm -hmm. it's definitely affected me. Yeah. And, you know, but... Regardless, you've had the longevity in your career that, I mean, only maybe a handful of, of people in the Major League fraternity can, can say that, that they've had. Um, but with all due respect, have you ever looked back and thought, you know, maybe just, just what, what could have been had I not been injured or hurt I mean, so much? I definitely have looked back at that. I don't spend much time thinking mm -hmm. about it because there's nothing you can really do. You can't change it. Um, mm -hmm. And really, I got to be thankful that I'm still here yeah. playing professional baseball, healthy now. Um, you know, and it was a lot of hard work to get through. You know, it was yeah. hard mentally, uh, it was hard physically to get through. And, you know, thank God I'm very lucky uh, to still be playing. Yeah, I was going to ask you how, how, how do you feel maybe overcoming so many injuries has, 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 has helped you out? I mean, maybe get you where you are today. Yeah, I mean, I hear from a lot of people. They're, they're amazed at how, you know, how many things I've gone through, how many surgeries, how many different injuries. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm just happy I'm still healthy and playing. Yeah, great. You know, you made your MLB deb debut April of 2005 with the Los Angeles Dodgers. I'm just wondering, what was your kind of, I've made it to the bigs moment? Oh man, there was, <laughs> there was plenty of them. Um, it sounds funny to jump all the way to the end of the season, <laughs> but when you say that, this is what springs out, was uh, just getting rookie hazed, you know, mm. uh, having to throw a Hooters outfit on, walk out of the plane, walk into the hotels in front of San Francisco <laughs> Giants, you know, roaring fans. Uh, nice. But no, you know, um, there were so many good moments. You know, I went to spring training that year, not expecting to make it to the big leagues. Uh, I was 24 years old. It was my first big league camp. Uh, I had already been told by my agent, hey, you're going to come in for two weeks, mm. and they're going to send you down to AAA. You're going to have to play there, and then hopefully by the end of the year, you'll get called up. Mm. Um, but things worked out. You know, a player got injured, and uh, I had a great spring, and I ended up making the team, and that's mm -hmm. how it started. So. Wow. Yeah, and in, in 2005, your first game at Dodger Stadium, you hit a home run in front of the home, in front of the home crowd. <clears throat> You would play 129 more games in 2005 and remain a member of the Dodgers until 2010. You know, just what, what were some of your favorite memories about, about being a Los Angeles Dodger? Uh, you know, I saw a lot of different uh, managers there. Um, it, was, it was awesome seeing the, the caliber of players that they could bring in. Being mm -hmm. a big market team and having the money that they had, you know, I got to, you know, play alongside Jeff Kent, uh, Jim Tomei, you know, some of the great guys. You know, they had a lot of young guys come up right there before I took off with Russell Martin and Camp and Ethier. So I got to kind of see both ends of veterans and young players come up. And uh, it was just fun being uh, in the mix there. And, uh, you know, I'm thankful for the opportunity that they gave me to, to play in the big leagues. Yeah. And then, you know, this year in 2010, you, you know, experienced kind of, a, kind of a low and a high. The Dodgers um, released you after about 10 years with, with their organization, but you were very quickly picked up by the Twins. What was your, your first thought about going to play with in Minnesota? It was awesome. Um, you know, just, just to go back to getting released, you know, it was, I knew something was about to happen. And um, it was so awkward to, to actually be on my way driving home during spring training when all my other friends were playing. But uh, it was only for about a week, and, uh, you know, I went through a couple teams, and I'd heard so many good things about the Twins. And uh, actually a former uh, Hanford student, Elliot Strankman, is a scout with the Twins. And uh, I've always heard great things about them. And, um, 
you know, as soon as I talked to, to Bill Smith, their GM, it was it was a given. That was a, a good match for me. Just the way that they play the game, the way that they want it played, uh, it just fit me very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm, you know, I think if you're a baseball fan, you just have to, to have to respect the fact that the, the Minnesota Twins consistently year after year scout well, you know, motivate their players well, and just you know, and I think that has to start with manager AL manager of the year Ron Gardenhire what's what's it like to, to play for him he's awesome you know like I said I've been through a lot of different managers um, it's just the way he, he handles us you know he makes you feel comfortable uh, you can walk right into his office and talk about anything it's pretty sweet he's a he's a great family guy um, but more than anything just as long as you play hard that's all he cares about you know he doesn't care if you make a mistake and that takes pressure off you and I think that that's huge because mm -hmm. uh, the more pressure you put on yourself the harder it's going to be to perform and uh, he just makes us all feel very comfortable. He, he believes in all of us, and, and you really get that feel from him. You know, he believes in you, and, you know, I can go 0 for 4 a couple days in a row, but he's going to have me out there that third day, you know, so that's the mm -hmm. confidence that you need, I think, in a player uh, to get the top performance out of you. Mm -hmm. Great. And with the Twins this year, you know, you, you did experience some, some playoff baseball. I mean, maybe talk a little bit about just how exciting this, this season was for you and, and the Minnesota Twins. It, it, it was awesome. Um, you know, like I said, I was released out of spring. Um, I signed with the Twins on a minor league split contract, uh, knowing I was going to have to go to AAA and basically earn my way to the big leagues. Um, so it, there was no, you know, pure future what's going to happen there. So the fact that I still made it back up there and then made the big league roster and uh, made the roster for the playoffs was more than I could have asked for. And mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I got to play with Jim Tomey again, uh, Joe Maurer, Justin Morneau. So these guys. It was very fun for me to watch and see some of the greatest guys in the game play because it helped me as a bench player become better. You know, I could watch them, I could ask them, pick their brain and ask them mentally, what do you do here? What's your approach there? Um, and it helps me become a better player. So I couldn't have asked for a better situation. Yeah. You know, as we're currently in the off season right now, um, what are some things you, you're working on? What are the, some of the exercises you are doing to, and what skills are you hoping to improve on? Well, as of right now, I'm just still rehabbing. I had a, a surgery. I tore my thumb ligament and um, they repaired it about eight weeks ago. So I'm just now starting to, to swing one handed bat. Um, I got about, a, I'd say four to six more weeks of rehab and then I should be good to go. But as soon as I get done with that, there's some things that, like I told you from talking from these guys, I think that will help me improve uh, just some things, mechanics in my swing, some part of the mental game um, that I'm already working on, but I just can't physically take the swings, but I'm still working on those with visual things and stuff. So I'm excited to, to get full throttle and have that last month before I got to take off. You've experienced a lot of success, you know, on, as a baseball player, but you also have a lot to be proud of off the field. Um, you know, how has becoming a husband and a father, you know, changed you and inspired you? It's been the greatest thing ever. You know, I, I had my first son in uh, 2008, and uh, I flew home during spring training. Uh, baseball was the last thing on my mind. Mm -hmm. So uh, ha watching him be born and uh, just bringing him into the world just made everything better. I've always, you know, dreamed of having a family, and when that started, it really made uh, me a better person. Um, it's just been amazing. You know, just mm -hmm. this last uh, three months ago, we had our daughter. So now i got two kids now and uh, a great family. and. Tyler loves baseball, so it's really fun to, to watch him kind of grow into baseball. Gets to, you know, come into the clubhouses with me now and uh, come down to our batting cage when I hit and stuff. So a lot of things that are really fun I enjoy. Yeah, and you have a, an, an amazing story of, of, of this Father's Day. You want to share, share kind of what, what you were able to do? Well, this Father's Day was awesome. Um, I was back in Rochester at this time. I was in AAA, and uh, they asked if Tyler would throw out the first pitch of the game. So I thought that was pretty amazing that mm -hmm. I got a go out there with my son, uh, you know, he's two years old, roll out onto the field, you know, they got people filled up in the stands and he's throwing me the first pitch of the game. So that was pretty cool. We got pictures, um, mm -hmm. who knows if he'll remember it later, but at least we got that, you know, memory we could share with him. It's gonna be cool. That's great. You know, you've lived in, you know, and played in Los Angeles. You currently play for the Minnesota Twins, but you, you decide to make your off season home here in Richland, you know, wh why is that? Uh, I love it. I mean, we, you know, number one thing, we, we have family here. Um, my wife, Tracy, has all her family in Pasco. Yeah. My family still lives in West Richland. Um, but just growing up here, it's just such a great family, you know, city. Uh, the Tri-Cities is pretty much all I know growing up, and um, we love it. You know, we've, mm -hmm. we've lived here ever since uh, I've been into pro ball, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, and a, a blessing that comes with you know being a professional athlete, kind of kind of being in the spotlight, is is, is the ability to give back to you know organizations and, and charities. And I was wondering, what are some of the, the charities you support, and just how do you how does it feel to be in in a position to help? It always feels great to be able to help. Um, when I was with the Dodgers, they always helped uh, you know 
start things up. I, I've, I've helped kids that were uh, homeless, uh, kids that have been battered before, um, and we would bring them to the games. They get to come, you know, watch a game on us, have uh, all you can eat food on us, and and that was fun to do. And now uh, mostly I do a lot of donations of uh, I try to donate bats and, and balls and you know, autographs of other teammates to people who got their own charity things going on where they could uh, auction them off, you know, create some some money to help other uh, things out. And uh, mm -hmm. just like I said uh, last week, I, I helped one of my buddies out down in L.A. Uh, running the FCA, which is Fellowship for Christian Athletes. And I just sold a bunch of bats off and uh, talked to a bunch of people on Facebook using that route. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, was able to, to generate a good amount of money to get down there and Major League Baseball matches me so it's it's nice to be able to to give when I can. And you know one thing I've, I've hope we've done today with our with, with this interview is, is kind of inspire kids, teenagers, you know, living here in the Tri-Cities that, you know, regardless of, you know, the size of the town you live in, you know, that no matter how big your dream is, it is it can come true. And you know what, you know, just what would be your message to a, to a, to, a, to a kid, you know, that's currently pursuing dreams that it may, it may at times seem un, un, unattainable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's going back to what I said before. I think the biggest thing is just believing in yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't let anyone tell you other. Um, yeah, just just trying to filter in the good things, let out the bad things, and and if you have goals, set them high and and don't stop. You know, mm -hmm. work hard and and believe in yourself. Well, I'd like to thank you know uh, former Hanford High School uh, alum and current Minnesota twin Jason Repko for um, for being our guest today. You know, you truly are a great role model for you know the the, the students, the teens li living in the Tri Cities um, area. And I know I still get goosebumps <laughs> when I when I watch on TV and I, I, I hear your name or I flip on over at Sports Center top ten and see you know making a, a diving catch you know on on ESPN. So just congratulations on and on at least one more one more season in, in Minnesota. And of course we wish you nothing but the, the best in the future. So th awesome. th thanks for having me. Thank you, here. I appreciate it. Well thanks for watching About Town. I was your host, Mark Ingham for City View TV. We'd like to thank Hanford High School for, for hosting hosting our interview today. And you know it's been a pleasure. Thanks Jason. Thank you. Mm -hmm.